Okay, on the multimeter, we're going to start out with one of these antiques. Now, this is an old analog meter. Uh, uh, got quite a few years on it. This is a volt ohm meter. All that means is it'll do voltage, which is uh, uh, pressure. It will do ohms, which is resistance and it has a number of ranges. Now all these used to be set up this way. They have many little places here on the uh, dial that you can set it for. Uh, most new meters are auto ranging so you don't have to do all these settings but in this case you see we've got DC volts here so that's direct current that'd be batteries and the like. Uh, we have uh, AC volts over here that would be your outlet voltage in your home and then we've got resistance here which there's a uh, a battery inside this thing that supplies power and that goes through these leads and I can actually put power onto a circuit through some sort of load or some sort of switch to tell if it's actually working or if the resistance is correct. There are different resistances for different loads. So it does most of the things we'd ask a, a volt -ohm meter to do. This one also has DC amps from 50 microamps up to 10 amps. That is sometimes useful, uh, not necessarily anymore. Uh, we use uh, microamps in our industry sometimes, but the uh, the rest of it we don't use much. So let's say I was going to uh, check a circuit for resistance. Now I'm in the off position here, so I'm going to have to go down here and decide which one I want to use. R times 10,000, R times 1,000, R times 100, R times 10, or R times 1. That's just giving you the different ranges it could be in. So when I go to use it, I'm going to take these probes, short them like that, and see if it zeroes out. Now I've got a zero adjust here that I can move back and forth and I want it to zero because you can see what I've done. The meter has actually moved over there meaning there is power there. This is a cute meter. I love this thing. Okay. All right. So I can actually make it move just by touching it. Now it seems to be climbing on me too. It's one of the reasons I'm not real thrilled with these. Okay. Uh, you can see that the resistance is changing by the way I've got these probes together. And that's part of why this thing's doing a jig on me. It is an old meter, so it's probes have got some corrosion and stuff on them. Anyway, the meter moved over there because I used the battery in it to go through this circuit to tell what the resistance is. Now, if I put it times 10, I gotta adjust it again. This is how we used to do all these things. Okay, now if I put it on a load it's going to tell me uh, what the resistance of the load is. And we're going to do that here. Okay, now I'm going to test resistance with this uh, analog meter and I've got a little load here that I'm going to go put it across. I'm going to take these two probes and I place them here. Now I'm showing, hmm, looks like about 14. I'm going to double check this thing for zero. Looks like it's a little bit out of whack again. Okay, so I check this here. Well, I'm still coming up about 14. So I'm reading 14 ohms. That is how much resistance to electrical current flow that this thing has according to this meter. Now I could change this to R times 10 and I'd be reading, oh boy, oh well, let's see if we can uh, zero this out. Yeah, it's out of zero again. So it's got to be changed each time you do this. 
Yeah, 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 not too far off, about 15. Uh, so this works. Uh, it does take a little bit to get it zeroed out. Uh, I probably bl break, bl blame these uh, leads a little bit because they're pretty old and kind of corroded. But uh, it does work. Uh, it's a little delicate and I probably would not use this anymore uh, we have different places to put these uh, leads right now I got black and common black is usually put in common and then uh, I've got my volts ohms and amps right there which means I'm gonna go here here or here if I need to do uh, it'll also do the this range here if I'm going to do 10 amps, I've got a special one there for that. I'd put that thing down into 10 amps. And uh, that would be an inline ammeter, which it would read uh, the uh, amps through the wires. And I can go up to 1,000 volts DC here. Okay, this, uh, this meter had one little thing that I used to use it for. Uh, not particularly this one. It was a different one. But... Uh, this is a capacitor, it's a run capacitor off a motor, and we did not have capacitor testers, or at least they were not common back then. So we use this as kind of a makeshift capacitor tester. And if I put the range in R times 10K, and I put my leads across this, you see it goes up and then comes back down. Now and then I can reverse it and it'll do it again so that kind of tells me something now what did that tell me capacitors are batteries they're a type of battery that we use often in AC circuits so they hold a charge and what I'm doing is I'm taking these probes that are coming from the battery that's in this meter and I'm putting it across here and charging the silly thing up well, as I charge it up, it has higher resistance. Let's do that one more time. The resistance goes down and then comes back up. Oops. Now the battery is fully charged. Now, when I reverse it this way, I'm discharging and then charging again. But it's showing that this actually works. It doesn't tell me what the uh, strength of it is, but it does tell me that it works. That was what we used to use. We have capacitor testers now and we don't need these anymore. Now you can see when I took the probes off, it stayed up. Now, reverse this again, so it's going to do it one more time. Now it goes up like that. Now this is with it off and then when I put it back on, it doesn't do anything because it's holding a charge. Now if I was to take and go across and short this out, like that, then it would do it again. But that was the way we used to test capacitors. Don't need to do that anymore uh, because we have capacitor testers on our meters.